Hi everybody. I'm back here for a third video in the series of three videos talking about hypertufa and making hypertufa pots for plants. Hypertufa is, as I said before, a kind of um, way of making your own pots. I don't know if you can see the side of that now because I don't want to tip the plant out. Actually I have one here. Uh, it's a way of making pots like this that look really like they're made out of stone almost. So they enhance the plant rather than drawing attention to the pot. That's the reason why I really like them. And I tend to make them with little legs so they look a little Japanese type pots. That's a, uh, a little Cheriodopsis with gravel on the top. So that's what I make them for and that's what I use them for. You can make all sorts of things with them and you can make any size. You can make from, this is probably the smallest I've made, up to, oh, I mean, big troughs, you know, for outdoor planters that stay out all the time. I talked in my last video too about a way you can repair them, like the leg was broken off this maybe last year or the year before and I never got around to repairing it. And this has been outside all the time since, but even after two years out in the weather I can still go ahead and just mix up a little bit of sand and cement and glob it on there, wait for about a week, for three days to a week depending on the weather, for it to dry and then sand it down a little bit and hey presto, it's got a new leg and it stands up straight now. So it's very easy to work with, very easy to add to and subtract from and all the rest of it. And you can colour it. Cement of course comes in grey and white as I said before. This is white cement I have here. And these are the colours which you can buy in any hardware store. There's black, tan, dark brown and a reddish colour. And depending on how much of them you use, you can either get a really light brown or a very dark brown. If you use the white cement and a little bit of this, it, it, gets, it gives it a kind of a pink colour like this. This kind of a pink kind of warm tone and the more you use it becomes more terracotta and the black is obvious. So those are the colours and for this video specifically I want to look at pots that were already made, they've been, the mix was mixed up, it went into the mould, they stayed in the mould for three days and then after three days, when I say three days I mean three days in reasonably warm weather or indoors. If they're outside and the weather is cold then they will take longer. And the one thing to remember about cement is that when you're working with cement never ever do it in frosty weather. Or if you're making pots in frosty weather then bring them in at night because if, if uh, on frosty nights the water in the cement freezes then they will just crumble, they'll fall apart, they won't set properly. So after three days your pots should be like this, should be dry enough for you to handle but still a little bit crumbly so you can still break bits off the edges of them and that means that you can still manipulate them so you can scrape them back with a knife if you want to if there are if you have legs on them and one leg is a little bit higher than the others there's a little bit of unevenness you can scrape a little bit back off it you can see there the way I can scrape it it's still quite hard but I can scrape it and where's my and when it comes out of the mould, if there's um, kind of sharp edges on it or parts on it that you don't want, you can sand it down with a wire, with a wire brush. You can see there, the way it's just kind of flaking off a little bit at a time. So it's still firm enough. It's firm enough for me to handle and work with without me worrying about it. It's going to collapse in my hands, but yet it's soft enough to still work with. Now these actually have been indoors for a week and um, I'm still able to work on them. So it does take a while. See there the way I'm scraping away at it and a little bit is coming off, not a huge amount. So that's a good stage to work at. When you've done sanding them back or taking bits off or even carving into them because you can, you can carve in lines and shapes into them you know if you want to make them look more natural or if you want them to be pitted or you know all that kind of thing 
then when you're finished doing all that and you're happy with the way they look and happy with your finish then you can um, or actually I want to say some so uh, just one last thing um, when they come out of the mold often if the molds are lined with plastic which they should be to, to make taking it out of the mold really easy then you get the kind of it looks you can see the lines that were in the plastic and some parts of it are very smooth so it has that kind of look about it and if you don't like that then go over it with a wire brush really quite roughly and that'll um, roughen it up bring it back to a more natural looking texture so when you're happy with the uh, with them then really all you do is you wrap them back up in the plastic and you leave them for a minimum of two weeks to completely cure. Now concrete and all concrete no matter what you're making out of concrete it's always the same it cures through a process of hydration as in it must be moist if it dries out too quickly it'll be weak so that's why you have to cover it up in plastic. Keep the moisture in, even though it may not, may not look like there's a lot of moisture in there, there is. It's not, it doesn't even do any harm to spray it with water first. It may be beneficial, especially if they've been indoors and they've dried out a little bit too much. So wrap it up in plastic, put it away somewhere for at least two weeks. In the summertime, two weeks is perfect. In the wintertime, it could be up to like a month or two months, depending on the temperature and then they're ready to plant up. When you take them out, then they're ready to plant up. So, I just want to have a look at some others, which I did the other day, and I've been in the house now for a week. Some of them you may remember from the last video. This was one that we made on the first video, and I was a little bit concerned that the mix might have had too much compost in it and not enough cement. And so it's a little bit crumbly still, even after a week. So I think really if I was doing that again, I would add more cement and a little bit less compost. But otherwise, I mean, it's not too, it's okay. You know, it will, it still work, it will work. Just better to err on the side of caution, really. Especially if you're going to put them outside. If you're going to put them outside, you need to have more cement in your mix and even possibly sand because sand makes them makes uh, cement really strong so that has the kind of see the way that it looks like it's been in plastic it has those kind of lines now you might like that i actually don't like it so i'm going to scrape that back I was planning to put legs on this too. I'm not going to do that now, but I might do that later. So I'm not going to waste time doing all that now. I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what the... And that can all go back into your... Anything that you shave off and just go into a basin or a bucket or whatever. And you can add it to your next Hyper 2 for mix. So nothing is wasted, everything is recycled. So wrap that up, put that aside, have a look at something else. This one. Oh this is an interesting one, I want to talk about that in, in a few minutes but I don't, I don't quite want to do that exactly yet. I just moved this out of the way in case I Knock it over. This one here I I made in if you remember I made it in this tin with a piece of foam in the bottom for the legs. I made two actually because there's one in there now. And uh, the other one I took out after three days. So I'm just going to show you that. See how it turned out. So that's the inside. I don't know if you can see the inside, can you? And um, that's the way it looks. Now I did go. I did go over it in. Um, 
with the wire brush to take the kind of a uh, molded kind of plastic look off it, you know. And that's the way it looks. It's quite strong now. It's not. It's not. Um, it's a little tiny bit, tiny bit crumbly, but not much. It's still. It's quite firm. Certainly firm enough to work on. There's a line there where the plastic got stuck when I was putting it into the mould and the plastic obviously got stuck in there and created that little line. So I can kind of help to remove that by scraping away at it or, or just kind of leave it and accept the fact that they're all going to be handmade and a little bit odd. They certainly won't look like they came out of a shop or, a, or out of a factory. So, okay. So yeah, that's that. So that, that uh, because it's a little tiny little bit, uh, still a little bit soft, that's the reason why it needs to cure a little bit further. So I'm, uh, it's been in there for a week, so I'm gonna leave it for at least another week, maybe even three weeks, because it's only April and it's plenty of time for planting them up for the summer. Away. This one here I want to talk about because this is a this is something different that I didn't do on the other two videos. Um, when I was first making a hypertufa, I made one this way. This was the first hypertufa I ever made, and I got a flower pot and I literally put it like that. And then I made up a load of cement, really quite wet cement, because I didn't really know what I was doing. I was experimenting. And I globbed it over the top. So it ended up like that. And I flattened the top of it there. And then I just put plastic over it. Well, it was sitting on plastic and I wrapped it up in plastic and left it for three days. And then after three days, when it came out, I scraped away this extra, as you can see, around there, scrape to give extra space because that's quite thick now, it doesn't didn't need to be quite that thick. I mean I could even scrape a lot more away. Really. But it makes for an interesting shape. Uh, it's very kind of almost like it was carved out of a piece of stone. It's very dark brown now. I, I think I put a little bit, I went it was a, bit, a little bit too exuberant with the brown colour but you know, it's dark brown now because it's still wet, because it's still curing. But when it dries out, it'll be it'll be much paler. And um, I really like this actually because, I, especially for small succulents, so when they creep out over the edges of the soil, they fill all this flat surface. They don't actually hang down until they get to the edge, and that looks really interesting. So I just wanted to show you that in case you were inspired to go and do those kind of things, because it looks almost more like a sort of like a halfway between a pot uh, or a piece of rock, you know. It has that kind of look about it, which is interesting. Um, so that's pretty much it, really. It's after the three days, as I said, once they're hard enough to scrape them back and work on a little bit, get them to where you're happy enough with them, the shape and the, the look, and then wrap them up and leave them for another two weeks. And then after two weeks, you can pot them up, plant them up. Uh, the other one thing, of course, is that um, after the two weeks, bef before you plant them up, it is a good idea to put them in a bucket of water with a little bit of vinegar overnight. Just because cement has lime in it, so um, depending on what you're planting in there, it may or may not be a good idea to neutralise the lime, and vinegar will do that. So... Um, it's not essential, really, because if certainly if they're outside for the summer, any rainfall will eventually wash that lime out, you know. But and I don't think succulents are that bothered really by a tiny amount of lime. But uh, just as a general rule of thumb, it's a good habit to get into, which I certainly do. Okay, so that's it. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And uh, I hope you're inspired to make hopper tufa. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.